How's it going, boys? The track comes back, and we're back at it again with another video. And this one is going to be about PvE. Yup. You boys heard me, PvE. Lots of you have been asking me, tricks. when are you going to make the PvE video? Please give me the PvE guy. Ever since you guys saw me playing that Firestab Baby Gun in Genesis about two weeks ago, and we were doing some crazy damage. We were even pulling aggro of some of the bosses, and you know, and, and that, that shit is like, you almost never see that before, you know? And that's how much damage we were doing with this uh, two weapons combined. You guys know that I use these two weapons uh, for PvP mostly, you know, like most of the times. And they are great together. They are amazing together. Uh, and I showed you guys how awesome they can be, right? But when it came to PvE, people were like, don't even think about it. Those two weapons are like super bad, horrible at PvE. And to the point that if you queue, even nowadays, if you queue for a mutation as a fire staff or bb gun or any of those two weapons related they were like yeah absolutely not I, no anything mage related you're not gonna get picked right um i i know it's it's like kind of like class races but everyone everyone just loved melees everyone loved melees because um uh, you know eight together strong i that must be it that must be it uh so i took it upon myself you know as the pvp king boys uh, to take it to a whole new level Right, I'm going to make Fire Staff and BB Gun also a top tier choice when it comes to mutations. Now, since I'm a PvP video maker, player kind of guy, I had no idea how to how to even start making this PvE video. So I'm gonna treat this PvE video as I treat any other of my PvP videos. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys the build, the rotations, what I'm using, why am I using it, and then we're gonna go into some uh, video clips and uh, just show you guys, you know, with a real perspective on how much damage we're actually pulling on these real bosses, right? And and why is it that Fire Stab BB Gun is, is such an awesome weapon combination for any type of mutation, except if it is Fire Weak. If it is Fire Weak, we'll just go ahead and skip to the other mutation, all right? Just 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 move along. But anyways, without making this any longer, let's jump right into it. First, let's start with the build. For the blunderbuss, it's going to look something like this. We're going to get Shrano all the way down, of course. We're going to be utilizing the claw shot, and I will go over in depth a little bit more why are we using the skill like this. We're going to get ramp. We're going to get deep load. We're going to get unload. We're going to get the splitting grenades. These are amazing for AoE damage and for single target. Splitting grenades is just so freaking good. We're going to pick a future planning and buy back. And we also going to get on a roll. The reason we're getting on a roll and we're not getting a fortifying aggression is because on a roll is only two seconds and you need to be within three meters from the enemy. I know it's 10 percent, uh, which is a lot more than this. But if you can, if you're able to stack this one, the five times, which we do a lot, right? You get 15 percent, 45 for 10 seconds. If you switch weapons, this will go away. But whenever we bring it back, we basically use like two abilities or, you know, we, we, we have this all the time. And a lot of the times we're not hitting the enemy from within three meters. Sometimes we're hitting the enemy from five, six, seven, eight meters, right? And we're not always uh, utilizing uh, fortifying aggression. So that's why on a roll, I think it's a better defensive tool when it comes uh, to this scenario rather than fortifying aggression we're going to be doing uh, some headshots uh, with this on some of the big enemies right if they're like big bosses we have a lot of opportunities to do headshot especially if they have like a shield breaking mechanic where they fall down on the ground and then you can hit them in the head rather easily for crazy amounts of damage and also to get those cooldowns back we're going to need a future planning because we're going to be doing a lot of abilities and that four percent really really helps out a lot uh, splitting grenade is the one with the longest cooldown but it's one of the hardest hitting abilities uh, especially because of the incendiary burst right this thing burns for a very long time you know it's 10 seconds plus the 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 30 percent from from the attributes it taking this all the way to like 13 seconds of burning and if you have a burning ring even longer so yeah the incendiary burst it's amazing for pvp i mean for people well, both pvp and pve and also soften, right? Deals 25% increased damage to targets that are greater than 50% HP. That's why we always going to start with the splitting grenades when it comes to the rotation. But once again, I'll get that in a bit. Shrapnel Blast, we know that this is our bread and butter when it comes to damage. Very short cooldown, very high damage. Super, super, super good for both PvP and PvE. Obviously, we're going to take it all the way down because Ace of Bomb is amazing amounts of damage. 
the claw shot the claw shot it's an amazing ability when it comes to pve even if you don't have the perk for it if you have the perks it's very good because it's extra damage that we can do with a shrapnel blast or a basic attack now why are we getting claw shot and why are we not getting net shot right you guys might be well trick you can have an escape with net shot don't worry about it we don't need escapes right this is pve as long as you don't stand on stuff you need don't, don't need to stand you should be fine so the reason we're getting claw shot is going to be because of these two perks right here combat readiness and refresh as you guys can see this is pretty much the same thing in two abilities right landing a pellet even if block lowers the cooldown of this ability by two percent each the next one each individual hit from this ability or from the blunderbuss primary fire which is your basic attacks will lower the cooldown of this abilities by 1.5 seconds as you guys can see right there basically a basic attack will reduce the cooldown or both disabilities at the same time on top of that this ability whenever you use it on the enemy and you have the maximum uh, i mean all of the all of this thing down here you get mobile overload which it gives you an extra bb and that extra bb you can utilize it obviously to reduce the cooldown of both class shot and shrapnel blast but it goes a little deeper than that right we're going to be utilizing on load which means that our basic attacks are going to be do a lot of damage because instead of being six bbs it's going to be eight bbs it's like an extra thousand damage to uh you know extra like 600 to a thousand damage with every single shot if we do the rotation correctly on top of that we're going to be utilizing deep blow this comes in very very handy because let's say that we have two bullets on the magazine right since we have this thing here that every time that we use an ability we get eight pellets instead of six pellets the basic rotation will go something like this we're going to use a splitting grenades followed by a basic attack with the own load now we're going to be having one bullet left in the chamber meaning that that bullet is going to be empowered by deep load so we're going to follow it with a shrapnel blast giving us eight pellets instead of six and it's also going to be empowered by deep load increasing the damage of those eight pellets by 15 percent and then now that our chamber is completely empty we're going to use the claw shot the claw shot will again since it's an ability will do damage to the enemy will pull us in basically uh giving us this passive right here you know on load and since it gives us just one bullet that means that we only have one bullet left in the chamber therefore activating deep load once again right so you guys can see how we get two shots of abvs 15 percent empowered and by using the basic attack from this one will diminish the cooldown of this one as well but the rotation will come in shortly this is the reason why are we picking disabilities over other perks and that does it for the blunderbuss now we're gonna go into the fire staff for the fire staff we're going to be making our way down here to rune of helios we want to make the way to rune of helios because we actually utilize this for this build i think rune of helios in pvp is horrible in pve is actually quite useful uh sometimes you don't need to stand on top of it because the mobs might be like on top of you and stuff and just get away with it you know just get away from it you don't have to sacrifice yourself to utilize it but the way that we are using it for this build is very efficient it's very quick very fast you don't have to worry too much about it it's fine so we need to make our way here so we need to spend all 10 points to make it over here we're not going to be picking meteor shower because we're not going to be utilizing meteor shower for this build that we're using i'll explain to you guys that a little bit later uh we're gonna make our way over here to the pyromancer we're going to make it all the way obviously uh to pyrodancer over here so the flamethrower has no cooldown we're gonna get these three over here kindle helps a lot with this build because it extends the burning from the flamethrower and it also the burn now we're gonna be picking just one point on the burn now because we want to make it over here to kindle and uh since we have the short version of burnout that means that we can use it through a clump of mobs or to a boss and it's going to be really short so you can turn around and start doing damage with a flamethrower fireball or switch weapons right we're not we are not getting heat up because like i said we don't have enough points but it's not really necessary and that pretty much does it for the fire staff now let me show you guys my attributes for the attributes i will be using 460 intelligence and 50 constitution the reason I'm not going fight con well is because I honestly, as a mage, since I don't have the fight death, I don't feel comfortable. 
having 50 constitution it's very 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 good and even a lot of players out there in that do mutations all the time and tens and they play like great axe spear and even hatchets some like the the, the 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 fact that you guys think that everybody uses fight con that is actually not real a lot of dps out there are actually using 50 and 100 con all right so 50 con it's more than enough for this build because we are a little bit distance from the enemy we're not inside of the melee guys so we don't get hit often by that plus the gear that i have it gives me a little bit of constitution so i put just a couple of points over here and he takes it to that very sweet spot which it you know your consumables are 20 percent stronger so your potions and 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 all of that it's just very useful you help your healer it doesn't have to heal you as often because you could be self-sufficient with your potions and then obviously we put in every single one of the points and intelligence because we're going to want to do as much damage as we possibly can so i'm going to be doing this series of video where i'm going to focus on one dungeon at a time pretty much the pve rotation and the pve principles for this build is going to have a very good foundation right meaning that it's pretty much going to be the same build for every single dungeon the only thing that will be changing it might be uh, you know a little bit here and there but i would like to cover that with you guys as i proceed to making more pve videos for different dungeons so for this video for the sake of the video and you know this is episode one we're going to be focused on genesis so this is my genesis build right here and for the next video i'll probably focus on you know, i don't probably i don't know dynasty and then i will show you guys my dynasty build so uh you know the build the, the the gear and the weapons for this video is going to be focused on genesis but like i said the pve foundation of damage and rotation and how to use the ability is pretty much going to be there for every single one of the dungeons the only thing that is going to be changes are minor things here and there but whenever those changes happen i will be guiding you through it in my videos so here we are this is genesis our staff is going to have angry angry earth pain obviously if you're going to be doing pve you need to have the bane for that specific dungeon it's mandatory it's as mandatory as having resilient in the gear for pvp so we're going to use that angry earth vein right there keen and empowering fireball all right this is the bat the staff that i'm using you don't need to use a keen and empowering fireball uh although for ang uh for for genesis anger earth i do recommend that you get empowering fireball on the weapon because you can get basically a free entire set of angry earth that it doesn't have empowering fireball in it so if you could get empowering fireball on the weapon that would be ideal and as for the king it could have been anything really it could have been king vicious at keenly empowered all of those would have been all of any any of those trees would have been good right you don't want to go too much to the keenly jagged because that is a little bit more single target also with the attunement attunement is very single target oriented so having keen vicious or keenly empowered is the good because it will cover you for every kind of situation with you know aoe and single target for the blonde boss that we're going to be using anger earth bane at keenly empower and venturing claw shot when it comes to the venturing claw shot you don't need to have venturing claw shot it helps a lot the same way that you don't need to have a keenly empower you can have enchanted uh you know replacing any of those two right there right so you could have anger earth bane enchanted and keenly empower or angry earth bane a uh, venturing claw shot and enchanted keenly empower is very good for those bursts enchanted is very good for the consistent damage but as long as you have a combination of those perks it will work it will work just fine and that pretty much is going to be it the standard perks that you're looking for for every single one of the dungeons that we're going to be doing is going to be the specific bane for that dungeon keenly empower or enchanted with venture claw shot or enchanted or keenly empowered you guys know what i mean for the gem in this occasion since it's going to be against genesis we're going to go with the augmented ignited all right for the fire staff we're going to go with ignited gambit because we cannot put a fire gem because well fire staff you know what i mean it's full it's 100 fire damage all right well all we do is increase the damage by 12 percent. you guys know how that works so for the gear where do we get this gear well easy enough for the helmet you get it in mutated genesis you get actually the entire set in mutation genesis you're gonna get the helmet the gloves the pants and the shoes from the last boss the snake grass looking lady right medusa looking lady uh and the chest you also get it from mutated genesis they give it to you just like that uh vigor blight resistant and anger earth war all you have to do is just pull it legendary 
I think that um, the Vega might be a random perk, but I got into chests just like this with Vega. And if you don't want this chest, then you can actually get a chest from Mutated BNB that it has Angry Earth, Ward, Refreshing, and Elemental Aversion. You, if you want to farm that one over there, it's okay. Just know that that one will give you 25, uh, 25 stamina. So if you have some stamina accessories or if you have some stamina on your weapons, you might go a little bit above uh, uh, 50 constitution and you need to be careful with that, right? If you are very close uh, to 50 constitution and you cannot use a food like the bird glaze or the pork belly fried rice, then you will be forced to use a 40 intelligence food, right? Such as the Ancomosalis scorpion and this 40 intelligence food, they are quite expensive. So I do recommend that you have at least, um, you know, at least um, 16 less constitution than, 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 than 50 con, right? Like ideally you want to have it around 34 con. So whenever you use this type of food, it takes it to 50, which is that sweet spot. If you go to 55, 60 constitution, it's not a big deal. You will be losing just a very tiny little bit of damage, but it's not a big deal. All right, so that is where you get the gear from. Now, as for the amulet, I recommend that whenever you do a mutation, you use a amulet that has the protection from that specific element, it's right? So if it is a nature mutation, then if you can get yourself the hands on a nature protection amulet that has intelligence, intelligence, and constitution. Like I said, as long as you don't go past that, you know, uh, 44, 30, I mean, 34, uh, 34 constitution. So you don't go too past, you know, too, past, uh, too far past that 50 con. So yeah, if you can go to the marketplace, if you can craft it yourself, or you might already have it, just look, you need a nature protection amulet. Uh, ideally, you want it like, like an old amulet. That way you can switch the gem and, you know, it, it, you can have a nature gem in there together with the nature protection the same way that you should have a uh, you know like an ice element for an ice element protection amulet for the ice weeks and a void for the void week etc etc you guys get me right that will add a lot of survivability to your kit for the, the ring i'm using the band of the demon dusk you guys get this one from uh, these mobs over here i'll probably show you a new world database where you get this ring from it has a little bit of intelligence with constitution it has refreshing hardy and keen awareness it's a very decent pve ring although the best pve ring for us now will be dropped from uh, the new starstone mutation that it has a fire damage refreshing and hopefully hopefully we can get it with burning if you get that ring with fire damage refreshing which is always fire damage refreshing but if you get it with burning oh man that ring will just be ideal for our build for every single one of the dungeon and the good thing about that ring is well you can change the gem and on top of that it's full full intelligence so it helps it helps a lot for every single build that we're gonna do in the future and for the earring you can use whatever earring really uh, as long as uh, probably doesn't have constitution because then again i just don't want you to have too much constitution so if you can slap something in there that has intelligence it's actually a pretty good earring then then you you all say right doesn't matter if he has regenerating if he has nimble if he has a refreshing refreshing event whatever all right as long as it's a good earring that is not a shitty earring then you're you're fine with it for the hard runes i will be utilizing the grasping vines that applies the weaken and also applies the rend this is mega mega powerful for pve if you could utilize the bio bomb you know that one is also good especially in mutations that the enemy has something like compost which it heals them for a lot so it's going to be another extra dot damage on top of the enemy that it adds up and on top of that you're going to be applying anti-healing and a little bit of slow for the enemy so you guys could use the grasping vines or the bio bomb i don't recommend that you guys use the explosion the explosive detonate because i will show you guys what do i mean by that and that pretty much does it for my entire gear abilities and perks now let's jump into the rotation for the rotation first i'm going to show you how the blunderbuss rotation goes like and then i will show you the fire staff and then obviously i will show you how both of them work together so for the blunderbuss rotation like i said earlier is going to go something like this it's going to be splitting grenades then we're going to do a basic attack then we're going to do shrapnel blast basic attack and power by the deep load then we're going to be using the claw shot which is going to be empowered by deep load on unload as well and that's going to be our basic rotation 
Now, the reason I told you guys to grab the grasping vines or the, the spit is because whenever you use one of these two runes, you could also use the dark descent, but that is not good for PvE. Or the cannon as well, which is also not that very awesome for PvE. But whenever you use one of these weapons, that one of these runes that put your weapon away, you actually reload the weapon. So if you're using one of those runes with the musket or the blunderbuss, the moment that you use that rune, it will reload your blunderbuss, giving you those two extra shots in there to continue our full rotation. Right if you use the detonate the detonate deals pretty nice insane amount of damage aoe right but usually that's not what we need the grasping vine it applies the ren it applies the weakens uh, to the enemies and every single one of them is probably going to be inside of a gravity well so they're going to be rooted in place it's just very very powerful at least one or your two teammates probably even three teammates using grasping vine it's super awesome if somebody wants to use detonate that's fine but sometimes i feel like the clump damage is not a big deal. It's like the clump damage is we're not worried about it. But the good thing about the grasping vine is that we can even use it in the bosses, right? You use it in the bosses. It also applies that awesome weekend that it really helps your tank not having to to block too much and everybody can just straight up do more damage because of the ren and the boss is not doing enough damage to one shot you but anyways here goes the rotation like i told you guys it's gonna be splitting grenades basic attack shrapnel blast basic attack grappling hook basic attack right so that is going to be the basic rotation as you can see we already had the shrapnel blacks already off of cooldown if we were to do one more basic attack shrapnel blast and basic attack you see the grappling hook is also ready so in that case we would have used the grappling hook and the last shot once again to have all you know that last bullet empowered by unload and deep load as well so now i'm going to show you how that rotation will look like with the grasping vines all right so it will be splitting grenades basic attack shrapnel blast basic attack grappling hook basic attack vines basic attack basic attack shrapnel blast switch to the fire staff and then proceed to do the rotation with the fire staff and then you you see that my cooldowns for the blunderbuss are almost already done so without grasping vine is pretty much this right that's gonna be the rotation then you would have done grasping vine basic attacks uh shrapnel blast basic attack uh that pretty much does it for the blunderbuzz once again it's gonna be splitting grenade basic attack shrapnel blast splitting grenade grappling hook basic attack and then is when you switch to the fire staff now i'm going to show you guys the rotation with the fire staff, and it will go something like this uh whenever we start the fight we're gonna start the fight with a fireball right we're gonna start the fight with the fireball as soon as we use the fireball it's going to leave the rune of helios on our feet and then we proceed to use the flamethrower and then at the very end you can use the burnout if you want to add that extra dot in there so uh whenever you use the fireball the rune of helios will be on your feet now don't don't worry to using the rune of helios before you have using the fireball before you had the rune of helios because what happened is whenever you use the fireball the moment that you press the button the rune of helios will be underneath of you so that fireball will actually be empowered by the rune of helios even if you start with a fireball i already tested this so do not worry all right so after we're done with the blunderbuss we will do the fireball we're gonna use the flamethrower right and then we're gonna be flaming the enemy with the flamethrower and you can use a burnout at the at the very end if you want to add another burn in there but you really don't have to now if you want to stand on top of the rune of helios for the full seven seconds that is okay by me but if you have the cooldowns ready on the blunderbuss because obviously the rotation sometimes is a little bit different because you have to roll the mob is attacking you whatever the case is if you have the rune of helios on your feet and you have your blunderbuss abilities ready go ahead and use it if it is a grappling hook don't use it just keep on burning the enemy with the flamethrower if you have the shrapnel blast and the splitting grenades on cooldown and you're fighting a clump of mobs then you will prioritize using the flamethrower that way you can burn all of the mobs in that clump if you are fighting a boss and the grappling hook is ready to go then you can go ahead and use the basic attacks and grappling hooks combination because you're just going to reduce the cooldown of your shrapnel blast so we can do more damage and if you have the shrapnel blast ready to go always switch to the blunderbuss and do the simple and most basic rotation of basic attack shrapnel blast basic attack and then switch to the fire staff if your other abilities are still on cooldown right so 
that is it the simple rotation for the blunderbuss and the rotation for the fire staff now both of these combined i will show you guys now a extended rotation of about 30 seconds uh like i said it's not always going to go exactly like that it might change it might vary a little bit here and there if you are fighting clumps of mobs like a bunch of mobs you will always start the fight with the splitting grenades basic attack shrapnel blast why am i saying that because the splitting grenades whenever they, like i said before whenever the target is above 50 percent health you do 25 percent more damage to them and the splitting grenade already deals insane amounts of damage so having that splitting grenades on the mobs and having that burn on the mobs which is a crazy burn from the entirety of that fight it will really help a lot why am i saying to use shrapnel blast as well because shrapnel blast the grenade from the shrapnel blast it's crazy damage and on top of that shrapnel blast is a pretty awesome damage is better whenever you use it on a single target but when you use it in a clump it's not about the actual numbers of the shrapnel blast but it's mostly because of the grenade that you leave behind that it deals anywhere from three four five six thousand damage for all of the mobs in that area right so for the clumps of mobs you will prioritize the splitting grenade shrapnel blast then you will switch to your fire staff use fireball and flamethrower 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 don't even worry about use grappling hook if you are fighting against several mobs right so we use flamethrower and then whenever your basic attack i mean whenever your shrapnel blast or splitting grenades are good to go again you can utilize it if there's only one enemy remaining then yes you can go ahead and start using the grappling hook but anyways here's how the full rotation more or less will go every single time splitting grenades basic attack shrapnel blast basic attack grappling hook basic attack switch to the fire stats switch the you know fireball flamethrower flamethrower basic attack shrapnel blast basic attack grappling hook basic attack grab uh, the grasping by basic attack basic attack shrapnel blast switch to your fire staff flame flame fireball splitting grenades basic attacks basic attacks shrapnel blast grappling hook basic attacks you know switch with fire stab burn the enemy a little bit more as you can see the shrapnel blast are ready to come basic attack shrapnel blast basic attack grappling hook basic attack basic attack fireball basic attack flamethrower this the, the abilities are ready basic attack shrapnel blast splitting grenades basic attack grappling hook basic attack i know it's crazy and i sound like a madman over here saying this full rotation but in reality is this rotation never ever ever ends it's extremely dynamic it's extremely fun it's not your typical traditional left clicking rotation out there with uh, you know like hatchets and and other weapons that all you do is left click for like 95 percent of the time and then you switch a weapon use something with that weapon and then switch back and it's like a left click left click left click left click flex flea, you know freaking fast for the entirety of the fight then you dodge and then left click left click left click left click for another 30 seconds and then you dodge and well you guessed it with this build it's just ability after ability with basic attacks and abilities and basic attacks swapping weapons between both weapons the most you stand with one weapon at a time using one single ability is going to be whenever you are burning a big clump of mobs with a flamethrower and you're hitting every single one of the mobs right there and you're splitting grenades to self cooldown but whenever they come on cooldown you use the splitting grenades basic attack shrine blast if you want to send another basic attack in there it's fine then switch to your fire staff a fireball into the clumps and fire staff a flamethrower if you want to use a burn now because you need to move and apply those burn that is okay but it's so freaking fun and so freaking dynamic now that pretty much does it for the basic rotation of this build now if you are in a different dungeon and you're using a different set which i will probably cover this next week whenever i'm doing either uh lazarus or sns or i'm doing bnb because with one of those pieces of armor i actually have a meteor shower if you were to have a meteor shower in one of your pieces of armors right now the rotation instead will go before you use the fireball and the flamethrower you will use meteor shower pew, 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 pew. you will get those stacks right whenever you're fighting on clumps you really will not use the meteor shower on on a boss 
because you're wasting too much time and doing too little damage is better if you only do the fireball flamethrower and and bb gun full-on abilities and rotation and only use the meteor shower whenever you can get a couple of stacks for example whenever you are fighting with simon gray and he pulls out the three minions from the ground then in that moment you use meteor shower you get four stacks four stacks and you get the 10 stacks very quickly and now for the next 10 seconds you will be doing more damage with that flamethrower right and in some of the bosses they do summon some ads but where the meteor shower really really shines is when you're fighting clumps that way you use the meteor shower first you get the 10 stacks of 20 percent in power then you're going to have the rune of helios on your feet you're going to use a fireball and flamethrower and in case that you have right now a set for the genesis with meteor shower i will show you how that build will look like so we will still going to get the same things that we were getting before right here we're gonna get the root of helios and we're going to get the flamethrower and now since we have four points we can actually make it all the way down to watch her burn so it's gonna be like this and if you were fighting against against a clump of mobs like i said you know you will use the splitting grenade basic attack shrine of blast basic attack switch to your fire staff use a meteor shower get those 10 stack cancel it with right click use a fireball and then proceed to use the flamethrower Right, and that is going to be the basic rotation for the fire staff if you were to have meteor shower in a piece of armor. But well, that is pretty much it for the rotation. So now I'm going to show you guys how much damage this build can actually put out. And it's going to be a very, very, very high amounts of damage. And if you don't believe me, well, I will show you guys pretty soon so basically the way that we're going to be doing this we're going to break down every single one of the abilities basic attacks and burning we're going to separate them and then we're going to add them and that will be pretty much the average of damage that we're doing it's very hard for us to know how much damage we're doing without a damage meter in the game so what we have to do is now breaking down and i will show you guys individually how much damage these things are doing it's very hard to tell whenever you're using weapons like blunder boss and fire staff because there's like a million numbers on the screen so you cannot tell exactly how much damage you're doing whenever you're playing with like a hatchet great sword great axe or warhammer it's very easy for you to know how much damage you're doing because usually it's just one big number on the screen right it's four thousand five thousand six thousand seven thousand so you know exactly how much damage you're doing for this example i was using bane right here now i understand that bane is level 63 he's not level 66 like the mobs inside of genesis therefore he has a little bit less magical resistance that the mobs on genesis but the damage uh, the, the difference is not that big so anyways we're going to round it up it's not going to be the exact exact you know the exact number that we're doing to him it might be a little less it might be a little more when we actually inside of genesis you know because we had to take rents in consideration empowerment and and all and just all the things right maybe the mob is just have a little bit less defenses than other but anyways here we go so the first ability we're going to be talking about is going to be the splitting grenades since this one is the one that starts the whole combo so the splitting grenade the explosion of the splitting grenade it can hit anywhere from 7 to eleven thousand damage you guys will hear will see that it's uh, 4700 with a crit and then 3000 and 2000 if we put these two numbers combined it's around 9800 but obviously two of them didn't crit and one like i said before this is bane uh but at the same time over here he only has two rends so the explosion of the grenade it's it it, it, it rounds about 8000 damage now the burning for the three grenades it's roughly 300 and this was the same exact number that i was in, that, that i was getting inside of genesis so it's about 8,000 damage flat with the splitting grenades plus about 900 with the dots the next one we're going to be talking about is going to be the basic attack since usually that's what goes after the splitting grenades now for the basic attack it's a little bit more you know a little bit weirder because uh one of the basic attack which is the last bullet is usually empowered by 15 percent and the first one is not and on top of that the rents but pretty much the average number that i got it's about 800 to 900 per bullet so if we multiply that times a 
Uh, it comes anywhere from uh, 6,500 to 7,000 damage per basic attack shot. The next one we're going to be covering is going to be the Shrapnel Blast. Now, the Shrapnel Blast is by far the hardest ability of every single one of the abilities in the game, I think, to tell how much damage you're doing. Because the numbers, they fluctuate a lot. There's not the same number that is several times repeated. Some of the numbers of the Shrapnel Blast hits less, some hit significantly higher. But after a bunch of Shrapnel Blast, pretty much the amount of damage that I was doing was anywhere from 9,000 to 12,000 damage around that range so we're probably going to put it somewhere between 900 i mean 9500 and 10,000 for average damage of the shrapnel blast the last thing i want to cover is going to be the grappling hook now the grappling hook only deals like 1000 damage at most but the good thing about the grappling hook is that it does give you that extra bullet and on top of that, if you do have the perk, it will increase the damage of your next ability or basic attacks by a, a little bit over 30%. So it does add up. I'm not going to add it over here, but just have that in mind. You know, it's one extra shot that you can do right there that it adds 30% extra damage to your next shot if you have the perk. If you don't have the perk, the main reason that we use the grappling hook, well, it's just for that extra shot. And on top of that, it gives us cooldowns back for the Shrapnel Blast. That way, we can use the Shrapnel Blast more consistent and more often. So now, if we add all of this up, and which this is pretty much the initial combo that we do at the beginning of a fight, especially if we're fighting against a boss. So if we add this thing, so it's going to be one splitting grenade, one basic attack, followed by a shrapnel blast, another basic attack, a grappling hook, and basic attack. So with that rotation of abilities right there, which it takes about, you know, three to four seconds, we can actually pull 35 to 40,000 damage. Now, I understand that is that, that is with the, the splitting grenades and the shrapnel blast, all of these things on cooldown for that insane amount of burst. But if we do not have the burst, we still have a very good consistent damage with basic attack, shrapnel blast, basic attack. You guys know that we do that a lot. And every time you do a basic attack, shrapnel blast, basic attack, that's basically like 20,000 damage right there and every single one of the basic attacks is anywhere from like 6500 to 7000 damage if you're able to connect all the bbs with the bosses which is rather easy because most of the bosses are like you know like bulky boys and and, and just bigger bigger you know bigger targets so it's very hard for you know, to do not land all of the shots on them so if we're talking about burst the first initial burst is anywhere to like you know like i said 35 to 40 thousand damage now the consistent damage of the blunderbuss like i said is going to be like 6000 6000 10000 6000 6000 you know and every time you reload remember you get extra 4% increased damage you can stack this up and you uh, if you don't hide the bb gun you can keep on doing it pretty much the same damage maybe a little bit less maybe a little bit more than the hatchet the good thing about this is that you don't have to be melee you know melee range of the target you can be a little bit further as much range as you can be with a bb gun sometimes it's like five six meters and at this point the hatchet player is like running behind the enemy and on top of that we don't have to dodge as much as a melee class because we're usually a little bit further from the boss's melee attack so we don't have to worry about dodging so that does it for the blunder boss you guys can see there the amounts of damage the insane burst and the awesome consistent damage that the blunder boss has for single target and that is where the blunderbuss shines for this build all right the blunderbuss is going to be an amazing support aoe damage with the splitting grenade the splitting grenade burn and the shrapnel blast with the shrapnel blast bomb oh one thing that i forgot to add to this whole equation the shrapnel blast whenever you use the shrapnel blast it leaves a grenade behind hey let's go ahead let's go ahead and add those numbers right there that grenade hits so freaking hard it's like it hits minimum to you know three thousand and i seen that grenade create sometimes six six five six point five thousand so let's add those numbers right there into the blunder buzz because of why not the splitting grenades it's badass it's pretty awesome not the splitting grenade 
well the grenade that comes from the shrapnel blast but you know what i mean and that pretty much does it for the shrapnel blast uh i mean for the blunderbuss so now let's jump into the fire staff for the fire staff we only going to take in consideration the damage of the fireball the damage of the flamethrower you know every time that it hits the enemy and the dot from the flamethrower I'm not going to take in consideration the burning from the fireball. But I know it's like maybe like 200 damage because, we, well, we have a lot of damage, right? Two to 300 damage. If you want, you can add it to, you know, an extra dot that you do. But the thing is that that, that dot does not stay on the enemy. And if the enemy moves, then the dot stops hitting the enemy. So therefore, it's not a very consistent damage. It's very good when you're doing it in clumps because usually the clumps don't move. But I'm not going to add it into the equation. It's going to be the fireball damage. The flamethrower, you know, basic damage plus the burning of the flamethrower. For the fireball, is going to be very easy because this is just one big number that comes, well, whenever you use the fireball. And the average damage for the fireball is anywhere from 7,000 to 9.5, sometimes at 10,000 damage. So we're probably going to put it around 8,000 damage, 8,500 for the fireball. And, and that's going to be it. For the flamethrower, the actual flamethrower hits anywhere from 1,800 to 3,000 every single take of the flamethrower. Now, the burning from the flamethrower, it averaged at around 300 to 320, somewhere in between there. So, the fire staff flamethrower will hit anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 every half a second, meaning that it could potentially hit anywhere from... Uh, 4,000 to 6,000 every second as long as you're using the flamethrower plus the 300-ish from the burning of the flamethrower that if we add all this together so it's uh, five numbers from the burning which it can take it you know roughly around 1,500 maybe 1,600 plus the 4,000 to 6,000 of the flamethrower constantly hitting so it, in reality the flamethrower is doing anywhere from uh, 5,500 to 7,000 uh, damage every single second and now you guys can see how powerful these two weapons combined can be for mutation right let's say that you start in a clump and you start with a splitting grenade that splitting grenade is gonna hit anywhere from 8 to 12 000 to every single one of those mobs in that area and also is going to apply that juicy dot that is almost a thousand damage every single second then you're gonna use the shrapnel blast and that splitting grenade is gonna be a couple of extra thousands damage in there you will switch to the fire staff use a fireball that fireball is going to hit all the mobs in that area for huge amounts of damage is going to leave the burning floor right and then you're going to start using the flamethrower we already established the flamethrower can do anywhere like six seven uh, six seven thousand damage every single second Plus the 1,000 damage from the splitting grenades. So that is an extra 1,000 damage. So now we're doing anywhere from six to 8,000 damage every single second when it's on a clump. And that right there is pretty much unbeatable, right? The hatchet and the great sword and the great axes, they do insane amount of damage. But the thing is that when it comes to clumps, they don't really hit every single one of the mobs in the area. They're hitting, you know, whichever mobs is right in front of them. But if there's a mob behind that mob, then they will not be able to hit it. And that's where the fire stab blunderbuss comes in. We have insane amounts of AoE damage for every single one of those clumps. Now, when it comes to single target damage... Oh man, we also have insane amounts of damage with that blunderbuss. Like I showed you uh, earlier, if you have like a boss, you can immediately put out, you know, 35 to 40, 45,000 damage in like the first four seconds. And then you'll have the sustained damage of anywhere from 6,000 to 8,000 damage every single second. And every time that you have that basic attack, shrapnel blast, basic attack combination, it's easily right there. You know, it could be 15 to 20,000 damage with those basic attack, shrapnel blast, basic attack combination. And that pretty much it, you know, for this video guide. Like I said, this one was for Genesis. Next week, I will make one. Uh, I will make one more. It's not going to be so in depth like this one because this one was pretty much establishing the foundation of this build how much damage we can potentially do and 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 that's it you know it's already right here so 
for the next week i will i will give you the you know how do i get the corrupted gear how do i get the lost ancient gear and how am i doing pve with the fire stab blunder boss for those specific mutations and that was it i hope you guys enjoyed this super in-depth guide like i said this video was mainly to establish the foundation on how this video actually work and why is it that it works and also why is it that it could be competitive with your other traditional builds out there all right it's not just about using hatchet and great axes and spears right if you are actually good with your class and you know how to perform with your class you could also potentially be you know doing as much damage as these other weapons obviously you guys know that i'm a fire staff and blunder boss expert so i knew that they had the power to pull this number so all i had to do was actually put it together you know get those bane's weapons uh, get the trophies and get the right gear so i was able to go all the way down to 50 constitution so i could see this number and i'm going to be honest with you i knew we could do a lot of damage but even to myself it was a surprise whenever i noticed that the damage that we're doing is competitive to those of hatchets and and great axes and spears right and the, the aoe damage and the single target damage it surprised me so much that we pretty much doing the same damage if you guys like this video hey don't forget to give it a like and also sub to the channel it really helps a lot also if you guys want to check my stream i stream almost every single day on twitch i start around noon est time so if you want to stop by just ask any question or chill in general just you know just stop by and say hi but until the next time i'll see you boys out there